Hello and welcome back. In this session, we'll be doing some practice. I want you to get speaking. So I have some exercise. So I have some exercises um, which we'll go through to get your mouth moving. So the first exercise, I want you to listen to what I say and repeat after me. It's a very simple exercise, okay? The Murray is the lifeblood of Australia's farming country, a legendary river that once thundered 1,500 miles from the Snowy Mountains to the Southern Ocean. So I don't want you to focus on the text, I want you to focus and listen to me and repeat after me. Now we'll go sentence by sentence. So once I say the sentence, I will give you some time for you to repeat the sentence. Don't look at the board, just listen to me, okay? Close your eyes if you need to. The Murray is the lifeblood of Australia's farming country. A legendary river that once thundered 1,500 miles. From the snowy mountains to the southern ocean. Good. Okay. So hopefully after your sentence you repeat it after me. Um, now what you can do is you can read it, the, the whole text. That's up to you. Uh, next one. Again, I want you just to repeat after me. I'll read the first, the whole thing all together and then we'll go sentence by sentence. So you don't need to repeat after me as I read the whole text, but after sentence by sentence. So, now it's choking to death in the worst drought for a thousand years, sparking water rationing and suicides on devastated farms. Okay. So, repeat after me sentence by sentence. Don't look at the board, just listen. Close your eyes if you have to. Now it's choking to death in the worst drought for thousands, for a thousand years. Now it's choking to death in the worst drought for a thousand years. Sparking water rationing and suicides on devastated farms. Okay, so how did you do? All okay so far? Good? Good? Number three. I'll read through it again. I'll read through the whole thing and then we'll do sentence by sentence. But is this a localized national emergency or a warning that the earth is running out of water? I want you to focus on... But is this a localized national emergency or a warning that the earth is running out of water? So, we'll do the whole thing for this one. I want you just to repeat after me. But is this a localized national emergency or a warning that the earth is running out of water? Okay, let's try that again. But is this a localized national emergency or a warning that the earth is running out of water? So what I want you to do is to focus on moving your mouth the right way. Make sure your tongue is in the right place and make sure you are stressing the right part of the word and sentence. Okay, good job. So that was the first exercise, bit of fun. The second exercise we're going to practice uh, phrasal verbs. So I want you to focus on the phrasal verbs. Are there any other phrasal verbs you could use in the place of each of these examples? So, what do you normally do at the weekends? I usually just hang out with my friends or go to the cinema or something. Unfortunately, I don't get the chance to catch up with them often as we're all busy, so busy with work. So what I want you to do is I want you to uh, think of maybe some other phrasal verbs, but most importantly, I want you to write down 
the use of this phrasal verb and this phrasal verb in two different sentences. So create a new sentence with hang out and create a new sentence with catch up. Okay, you can pause the video and then come back. Okay, so the next one, so still with phrasal verbs, do you have a healthy lifestyle? I don't think I really do. Something I definitely need to do is cut down on the amount I smoke or even give it up completely. I would also like to cut out red meat from my diet. I've read that both of the, those are unhealthy. I found out recently that my father has cancer and he smoked a lot when he was younger. So, for this exercise, carry on with phrasal verbs, I want you to use this, uh, cut down on, give up, and found out in another sentence or in a, in a paragraph. So I want you to use all three of these phrasal verbs in one paragraph. So a few sentences, okay? So try and use all of these in one paragraph. Try and make sure it makes sense, make sure it all flows, flows well and it all makes sense together. But I want you to use all three in one paragraph in a few sentences. All of the same topic as well. Okay, pause the video and then you can carry on when you're finished. Do you like the place where you live? Yes, I live with some college friends that are several of us in the house, so it is crowded. But we get along well, so we have not had any serious problems. I fell out with one guy who lived there because he played his music too loud, but he has moved out now. So for these two, I want you just to create a sentence with each of these. That'd be easy. So create a sentence by using these phrasal verbs. So remember, pause the video and continue when you're finished. Okay, do you like to collect things? Not anymore, but the other day I was cleaning up my room when I came across an old album of football stickers. I used to collect them when I was younger. So, for this one, I don't want you to write anything down. I want you to speak it. So, I want you to use cleaning up and came across in one sentence. Think about it. Don't write it down, but say it. Speak it. Okay? How else can you use these phrasal verbs in a sentence? Think about it. Then, I want you to speak it, not write it. Obviously, you can pause the video if you need time to do that, and then come back to the video when you're ready. So exercise three, we're going to go into collocations. In this exercise, I want you to listen and think of which best collocation fits in the sentence. So I hope to something my own business one day. So I want you to speak it out what you think fits best. Say each of these, speak each of these, within a sentence. I hope to do my own business one day. I hope to have my business one day. I hope to make my own business one day. So which one do you think sounds natural as you speak? So, I hope to have my own business one day is the correct answer. Did that sound the most natural to you? Number two, I don't do many hobbies. I don't have many hobbies. I don't make many hobbies. So, I don't have many hobbies. My wife usually does the bed rather than me. My wife usually has the bed rather than me. My wife usually makes the bed rather than me. Which one sounds more natural? Think about it. It's all about practice, remember. Which one sounds natural with collocations? My wife usually makes the bed rather than me. My country's... Many, sorry, many countries do problems with obesity. Many problems have problems with obesity. Many countries make problems with obesity. 
So it's many countries have problems with obesity. I did a mistake in my IELTS reading last time I took the test. I had a mistake in my IELTS reading, t reading last time I took the test. I made a mistake in my IELTS reading last time I took the test. So which one sounds the most natural? You practice as well. Speak them out. I made a mistake in my IELTS reading last time I took the test. Six. I something my break at work at 3.15. I do my break. I have my break. I make my break. Which one sounds the best? I have my break at work at 3.15. Reading a lot does a real difference to your IELTS score. Reading a lot has a real difference to your IELTS score. Reading a lot makes a real difference to your IELTS score. Speak, you, you say them as well. Use each word, each collocation, each verb. Which one sounds the most natural? Reading a lot makes a real difference to your IELTS reading score. I'm planning to something a holiday in June or July. I'm planning to do a holiday, I'm planning to have a holiday, I'm planning to make a holiday. So I'm planning to have a holiday. I do my shopping at the weekends, I have my shopping at the weekends, I make my shopping at the weekends. Which one do you think it is? I do my shopping at the weekends. I don't do much sympathy with students who fail because they did not study. I don't have much sympathy with students who fail because they did not study. I don't make much sympathy with students who fail because they did not study. So I don't have much sympathy with students who fail because they did not study. Great. So we've done a bit of fun practice. I want you to, you can go through these again and practice again if you found one topic a bit harder. If you found one of the topics harder, go back to the previous lesson, watch the video again, and just go over in case you missed any of the important information. Great. I hope you had fun, and I look forward to seeing you next lesson. Thank you. Bye.